welcome to Student Technologies. Today in this course, we are going to discuss about our React. Before going into React and discuss what is the features of a React and a lot of things, first we have to understand like why this React is more popular in this market and what is the front-end language and why this React, Angular, Vue, all these different, different kind of framework which is available in the market, people are mostly using. Because you know that in last couple of years, people are mostly using these front-end tools as compared to if you see the five year back, there is no existence of, or 10 year back, there is no existence of this React, Angular, and Vue. But nowadays, you can see most of the company, you can see that all the companies are converting their application into this front-end language. As a developer or become a developer, you must have to first know that what is the need of all these languages. Languages means or what is the use of these tools like React, Angular, and Vue. If you know that one, then you can able to understand the importance of the front-end language. But before going that, I'm expecting that you people at least know the basic programming. Because if you're going to start any programming language, then at least you have to know what is a program and what is a like, software, what is a web application. You have to know that. Okay. But now let's go and discuss about what is a front end language and how this React, Angular, and Vue. Today, guys, we are going to discuss about React. But if you compare between React, Angular, and Vue, both all these different, different framework or this library are doing the same work. But understanding this work, now first understand a web. Now, what is a web and why web is required? That we have to understand. You know that any application which is going to run on a browser using the internet, that application we are going to call as a web application. Just like Flipkart, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever application you can see that, that application you can able to access using your browser, right? Just example, suppose I want to access a flip card and I can simply go and write type a flip card and the flip card is going to display the content of the flip card. Now, as it always always going to discuss, going to think about as a developer. As a developer, you have to know that okay, if I go to type the flip card in the address bar, some some data is displaying in the page, right? It's a simple thing. But how this thing is displaying the screen means how the button is displaying how the this uh, image is displaying how the label is displaying how the slider is working if you're going to click the next it's going to go for next if you're going to click the login the pop-up is open you can see a lot of things available in the website right now we have to understand how your browser work now suppose how the browser able to understand i need to display this this image i need to display this text box i need to display this button all these things for that reason you have to know the browser language because you know that for if you're going to interact with a computer or a system you first you have to know that comp that language the way we are going to communicate with each other using english language or hindi language or telugu language same to same if you're going to interact with a computer, you have to know the programming language. Now, guys, now if you are going to an, it, interact with a browser, you have to know the programming language for the browser. If you don't know the programming language for the browser, then it's very difficult to develop or you can go and communicate with your mobile with your browser. For that reason, if you are going to interact with a, any of the browser okay guys any of the browser it may be chrome it may be firefox or it may be edge or any browser then at least you have to know three basic programming okay first we'll go start from the web then we'll go and discuss why this react js is required and what we are going to cover on that means any web browser and you know that web browser is used to access the web application using the internet any web browser is supporting only three languages okay the first language is all if you know it's html second one css and third one javascript 
First, we'll go start from the basic. We have to first understand a browser, then we'll go and discuss about other things. Now, in this world, any browser you can see, as I gave an example, Chrome, Firefox, and everything, all the browsers supporting these three languages. Apart from these three, browser cannot be able to understand anything. Means if you know C or you know C++, you know Java, nothing is going to use into a browser. Means if you are going to de develop a web application, that web application at least contain these three programming language. Now let's go and discuss each and individual programming languages use. Okay, all of you know that HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Means using this HTML, you can able to design the page, right? Design the page means you can able to add a image, you can able to add a text box, you can add a button, label, all these things you can see it here. All the things you can able to design using the HTML. And pretty much I, I expecting if you people already know the HTML, but the use of HTML is design the web page. Means if you want to add any kind of elements, elements means guys, any kind of like image or button or text box, all this kind of controls or a, all this kind of elements you want to add into your web page, that time you required the HTML programming. Okay. And same to same CSS. Please, CSS stands for cascading style sheet. From this name also, you know that styling means suppose you want to do any kind of coloring, you want to do changing of any kind of the element of the HTML, then we are going to use the CSS. CSS is going to do that, style the web page. Understand these two, two things. HTML is used to design the page design means add all the image text box button link all these things but css is used to style the web page style means what suppose you want to add a color here suppose you can see that the background color is blue here and you can see that here the link color is going to be red uh, sorry is the is the, is the um, white same to same here you can see that if you're going to mouse over here, it's going to change the different color. All this kind of stuff, if you want to do into HTML, then the CSS is the only way you can do that. Because in HTML, you cannot do any kind of coloring or all this thing. HTML is only for design the stuff. If you want to add some kind of coloring, styling, or any kind of increase of the font, decrease of the font, lot of like styling you want to do then you have to use CSS. And I hope you people already know HTML and CSS, basic HTML CSS means how to add an input button, how to add an image, all these things you have to know. Because if you we are going to start the React, for starting the React, at least you have to know HTML and CSS. Because this is the basic things you, you at least have to know. Now, now these two are the okay. Now let's come and discuss about the use of JavaScript. Guys, you know that now nowadays everyone is talking about JavaScript, right? Now why this JavaScript is required? We'll go to start from the basic. I'm going to give one specific scenario. Just imagine, you can see that we have a slider here, right? This slider here. Now in this slider, we have two button here, right? One is left button, another is right, right button. Slider, you know that we are going to slide the different different content. Now, guys, if I'm going to click this right hand side button, you can see that is giving me next slide. Same to same. If I'm going to click the left hand side one, it's going to give me the previous slide. Means this is for next, this is for previous. Now, here what happening? You are doing some kind of activity activity in the sense if you're going to click this this particular area then something is happening something is happening means it's going to give you the next image here same to same if you're going to click it left hand side it's going to give you previous data previous slide now this kind of operation you cannot do using html and css as i told html and css these are two are used for only the designing and styling.
and these two don't have any kind of logic means you can only bind the whatever you can design that going to display but html and css cannot do any kind of dynamic operations now you will ask me a question what is a dynamic operation to understand dynamic operation you can see here if i going to click the this button or this link then i can able to see the next data team can understand here the if you going to click on this one now you are doing some kind of action and based on your action if you are doing any kind of operations or you are doing any kind of work that is called dynamic operations understand means if i am going to click the click on this login button i can able to show this pop up now here logic will be if someone going to click the button means the here you are writing some logic or you are writing some code using that code you can able to open the pop up guys this thing is called the dynamic operation and in a browser if you want to do any kind of dynamic operation okay dynamic operations or event dynamic or event operation then you have to use the language which is called the javascript now you have to understand now html is used for designing css is used for styling or coloring and javascript is used to do the dynamic operation for the web browser and i hope that you people are pretty much know about all these things now you will ask me a question why you are discussing all this thing in the in in the react chapter because we are going to discuss about react right then why you are going to discuss all these things now guys this is the starting point of react because we are going to develop the web application okay using the react or angular or vue any front end language you can take it you, you using that language we are going to develop the web application means or i as i told that every browser or a view of application contain only able to understand this three language means if we are using react or any front end languages finally all the languages code or all the languages logic is going to finally convert into this html css and javascript for that reason our starting point is always going to be html css and javascript if you don't know all these three things then there is no need to learn about new this react angular and javascript first we have to understand these things then we'll go and start with the react angular or any front end language that's why i'm talking about all these three languages because these are the mostly widely used programming front end language in the market now 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 you will ask me a question okay that is okay because using html css javascript we can able to develop the web page then what is the use of react why the react is used now guys to understand the react first you have to understand two things one is how a web application works means if you are going to develop any web application how the web application work for that reason let me draw something we have to first draw something then there only you can able to understand how web application work if you are able to understand how the application is work then only we can able to understand the importance of a front end language now here guys to develop any web application okay basic web application we have required three things okay first we will understand one by one thing now let me divide these three things into three different different section this is one section second guys is the one section this is the another section and this is the another section simply we'll go about to understand these three things but before going on that let me go to design two section only and third section we're going to discuss later okay you can see that if you are going to develop any application we require the first thing that is called the ui okay and what is ui is called the user interface the user interface you can see that 
you can able to access the browser here you can able to see all the browser content this is your user interface same to same you can able to access the flipkart or facebook or twitter or any web application like um, youtube also using your mobile that time that is also called the user interface interface means it's a screen using which screen you are going to access a application that is called the user interface the simple things user which uh, interface interface means a screen you are using mobile you are using suppose tablet you are using the uh, suppose watch you are using the tv or using browser any medium or any screen you are going to use using that screen if you are going to access any application that is called the user interface simple right now just imagine without user interface what we are going to do that just imagine facebook suppose youtube is there suppose flipkart also there and there is no interface is there then how you can go and shopping using the flipkart for that reason for any application in this world the first entry point to the application is ui for that reason ui is more demand into market because if you if you don't know the ui then how you can go interact with the application for that reason the first in the first layer of any web application is the ui this is the first layer when you ever any application the first layer is the ui and the ui stands for user interface the interface can be anything it may be suppose a ui user interface user interface may be suppose browser a browser it may be a mobile it may be a tablet it may be a tv or it may be a watch you know that nowadays you can able to access all the application in different 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 devices and this devices is called the different different user interface right we can develop any application you can our ui can be anything because same uh, using the same facebook you can able to access your mobile as, as, as well as into your um, web browser also right now that is user interface now as i told user interface is the initial entry point for the application now guys ui ui is just for display the data because here you can see that here you can able to see the data if i go and click one of this you, you can able to see only the data ui don't contain the data first understand it is used to okay ui is used to display the data understand but it cannot store the data these things this data whatever data you can see it here this is not going to store into your browser this data is stored in different place that data we are retrieving from there and displaying the here guys that part is called the data where it's going to store that part we are going to call as database and you know that in your, in your academic you learn about what is a database database is used to store the data because ui is only responsible for display the data it's cannot going to store the data why because the because we are not going to load the entire data into your browser right this data is for everyone it's not for only for you for that reason we are not going to store the data into our browser to store the data we require a separate layer that layer is called the database and you know that you have a law on the database called like rdms relay stand database management system relay stand database management system in the academy just like oracle and suppose ms sql microsoft sql and postgres and mysql all are the examples of the rdms all and i hope you people already know all these things in your academic you at least know the in rdms we are going to store the data in, in the format of a table row and column format right now to store the data we require database now what we are going to do that whatever data we have in database that data we are going to communicate from this user interface to 
this database and database to user interface. This is the basic use. Means to access the data from the database, we require a connection, and that connection is going to retrieve the data from the database. But here is the problem, guys. What is the problem? Because database is not only for you. Because Facebook is not only for you. Facebook is only for it's, it's used for everyone. Just imagine you store the data and if the data is going to direct interact with the user UI, then anyone can go and change the data. For that reason, there is no direct connection we can do with the, your UI to your database. For that reason, we require a, another layer in between that, which is used to communicate with or which is going to use, going to secure the connection. Means user interface is not going to directly interact with the database because that is a security reason. Because you know that here we have different, different type of user interface. For each and every interface, we have to write a code to connect to the database. For that reason, what we did without writing the code for each and every interface, we are going to write one single code and that code is going to interact with the database. But also we are going to implement some kind of a security. We are going to implement some kind of authentication authorization for the application to access the data. For that reason, we required a another layer and that layer is called the server layer or you can call as the API layer, application programming interface layer. Now what happening here? Here, you cannot direct going to interact with your database. First, you are go, you will go and interact with your server, okay, or API. Then this API is going to interact with your database, okay. Again, the response whatever come from a database is going to first going to database to your server, and again the server is going to reply back data to the UI. If you see any web application in this world, all the web application is all the web application in this world belongs to this three layer. Any applications. This one is user interface, one is API, one is database. Okay, apart from that, there is n different different layer of uh, different different layer also available. But as a basic application, web application, this is the three things, three layer is you have to understand. One is UI layer, one is API layer one is database layer ui layer is used for design the user interface from different different devices just like mobile tablet web browser and tv watch etc yes. server layer or api layer is used to interact with the database and do some authentication authorization means suppose you uploaded a photo and you are the user who is going to delete it for that reason you have to need access to do the all the access management, authorization, data access, everything is going to be done by the server side programming, server server. And the server is going to interact with the database. Okay. Now, what happened with here? Here we can directly interact with the database. What we did, we can go via a another layer that is called the server layer. To write a server layer programming, we at least required any programming just like a Java, Java C -Sharp, Python. Okay, and uh, at least we required um, any uh, uh, Ruby on Rails, PHP, etc. And you know that this is the mostly used programming language in this world. These are the different different programming: Java, C -Sharp, Python, uh, Ruby on Rails, PHP, like Java Spring Boot, .NET Core. Lot of uh, different different languages are there. Which using that we can able to develop the server side programming. This part we are, going, we are not going to use this one. Oh, okay, one thing I left that is called the Node.js. Now, this server layer, database layer, we'll discuss later. But now you can see that we are now are mostly focused on the UI layer. And here you can see that as a developer, if you know UI, if you know API, if you know database, that kind of a developer is called full stack developer. Means you know that, guys, now, nowadays everywhere uh, companies are required the full stack developer. Full stack means as a developer, you have to know UI, you have to know API, and you have to know the database. That is called the 
full stack developer all the stack you have to know but suppose if you know only ui then you are a ui developer if you know api you, you are a API developer if you know only database that is called a database developer but if you know all these three things then that is called the full stack developer okay here but again this full stack developer is divided into multiple parts how multiple parts now if you go for java just imagine for user interface you learn html css and javascript for the back end you learn suppose java for the database you learn the rdms just imagine you learn three different languages for three different layer for ui layer you learn about javascript for the api layer you learn java or c sharp or any other language for database you learn about rdms for as a full stack developer you learn three different 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 language now here the problem is now for each and every stack or the stack or layer you have to learn different different language but if i going to tell you no you have to only learn one language and that language is going to use ui side api side and database side then while you will ask me a question is there any such kind of language which is going to use in three different different layer yes guys that that language is called javascript that's the reason in the market javascript is more demanding now if you learn javascript only once then you can able to write the code in ui you can write the code in api you can write the code in database now let's discuss about these things as i told okay you able to understand web, web browser right using the javascript you can able to write to web browser application now in the server side server side means in the in the api side suppose you want to use javascript then you can able to use the language called node.js means using the node.js means node javascript you can able to write the server side language now you can see that in ui we are using javascript and the api also you are using javascript now you ask me a question okay in this two layer okay this due to this two this two layer are the programming layer we can able to use javascript what about the what about the database no database we are using rdms oracle mysql postgres all these things no guys now the database also divide into two part one is rdms whatever guys you learn into academic but now also new database introduced that is called no square i heard, i know that if people heard about no square nowadays it is a more uh, demanding in the market it is called no square means sql no that structure query language means the rdms they are saying here there is no structure query now what then data going to store data going to store in the format of key value pair we are going to discuss about this thing later but just understand no sql data is going to store in the form of the key value pair now what is the example of no sql the no sql example is most demanding database in this world is mongodb mongodb suppose cosmos db out db Cassandra, lot of the database is available in the market. We are going to use the data in SQL. You know, no SQL. You know that SQL or RDMS is going to store in the data in format of a table, row, and column. Whereas no SQL is going to use the data in the format of the key value pair. Now, guys, here what we are going to do? You are going to learn the JavaScript for UI, JavaScript for the Node.js. Same to same, we are going to learn the JavaScript for the this one, the MongoDB. Means if you learn JavaScript, now this same JavaScript can be used in three different, 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 different layer or different, different stacks. That's the reason, guys. Nowadays, all people, all developer want to learn the JavaScript. If you learn only one JavaScript, that JavaScript is going to work in different, different layer. Same to same if you are a developer if you know javascript and you are going to write for three different different layer that developer is called as min stack developer is min stack min, min stands for m stands for mongo okay mongo min mongodb 
E stands for express. A sorry, is a Monstack developer. Express R starts for React and N starts for Node. Okay, means same to same. If you are going to for React, then Mongo, Express, React, and Node. Guys, Express is the framework for Node.js. Using the Node.js, we can be able to develop the web, web API. For that reason, we are using the Monstack developer. Same to same, we have Minstack developer. Mean, what is it mean? Same Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. Here, instead of this, um, instead of this React, you are using the this um, angular here this is called monstack this is called min stack means if you are going to learn the javascript and you are going to learn the node.js and if you're going to learn mongodb nowadays these are the most demanding language if you go for react you are as a react developer monstack developer if you go for angular you are a min stack developer but in today's our class we are going to learn about the react means we are we are become a this developer min stack develop mon stack developer you are a full stack developer but as a full stack developer you are going to choose the javascript into your programming language this is called the mon stack developer okay now now you pretty much able to know that what is your web application how the web application is work now let's come back to our part which part why react is required right to understand a react first we have to understand two things what thing we have to understand first we have to understand what is a web application and what is a single page web application let's understand this part you can see that i have two website one is this flipkart another one is our synotech site if actually there is no comparison between these two sites but we'll go as compare as a logical compare in this in this flip card, we have a header and we have a list of menus. List of menu means just let me click on these um, mobiles. Okay, you can see that we have a header and we have a list of menus here, right? Same to same, if you go to Synotech site, we have a header and we have a list of menus here. Don't compare about the uh, like the features of these two things, but just understand as a developer, just understand these two parts. We have a header and we have a menu. Here we have a header, we have a menu. Let's go and discuss about two things here. Now, here you can see that, guys. Let me click on the about. If you're going to click on about, you can see that my page get refreshed and we get the data. Same to same, let me go here and click on this TV app. Just click on this MI. But you can see that here only this part got changed. Okay, this part got changed and sorry. This part got changed and other part are remain constant. Now let's see the in little bit in depth. Let me right click here and go to inspect. And you know that inspect is used to like do some kind of research on the web page. Let you can see this element tag. Just see this element tag. Let me click on home. You can see that guys, my entire HTML is reload again. Let me we'll do another time. Let me click on contact. You can see that our HTML is reload again and again. But if you go to this flip card, let me go and do the inspect. Here, what we're going to do, let me click on view TV. Okay, view. You want to click on view, you can see that my HTML is remain same. It's not getting reload again. Only my content getting content is displaying here. Now you'll ask me a question. What is the big things in there? Okay. Here also going to click on the each and the individual page, individual links, we are getting the data. Here also going to click uh, click on the link, we are getting the data. Now, guys, let's understand the actual importance of these two sites. This Synotech site is called as traditional web application. Traditional web application means what? Each and every click of the link. You can able to see all the data. Okay, you can able to see, you can able to see load entire page again. again. But if you go to this flip card, if you're going to click any of the things, let me click on MI again, you can see that it's only load this content. 
other other content as remain constant now this kind of application is called as single page application single page application and short form is spa means single page application means we have only one page and here based on our interaction based on our uh, requirement what happening we can able to see the content you can able to see the data now let ask me a question what is the benefit of using this single page application nowadays you have to understand all the application is mobile first mobile first means you can develop for your mobile you can develop for your uh, browser also and you know that the bandwidth of your mobile is little bit less as compared to your desktop means if you're using broadband connection then that is the compared to less just imagine guys for each and every link so mi view or all the links i i have to only load this content right i don't know need to load entire content because this is already there why i need to load entire content if i go to load the entire content then what will happen it will go to the ui then it will go to the api again go to the server database again data will come back database to api api to ui just imagine to load a data to the ui we have to follow all these three things and if you are going to the api that is api means what by default it's a computer right it's going to consume the memory of the api same to same database also it's going to consume the memory of the database because we know that here we have only required this thing only once the menu is going to load only once why we need to load the menu again and again for each and every click in this case what will happen is not going to consume the client bandwidth client bandwidth means if you want to implement the single page application it going to consume the less bandwidth of your client client means who are going to use the application that is going to use the less bandwidth and one is it's going to use the less server memory because every time we are not going to call this api again and again third thing is is going to use less database memory you guys know that if is going to use less all these thing is going to cost you very less for that reason single page application is used to less your cost of your api calls api calls means the server calls or database calls as well as your client bandwidth calls that's the reason nowadays we are using the spa now to developing this spa we require the programming language what programming language we can use the react means using the react we can able to develop the single page application now guys let's discuss what are the things we are going to provide in this course to develop this single page application i know that i have discussed lot of thing because as a developer become a developer you have to know that why this react is required if you don't know the use of requ uh, requirement of react then how you can go and use it now let's go and discuss about what are the things we're going to discuss on the react so we are fetching data from database yeah and we are showing it on the web page right so now my question is like you said less bandwidth less memory yeah uh see how i mean see uh, we are fetching the data from database and we are keeping it on the website yeah so next time i'm clicking another link uh and i'm opening i'm seeing the same data again so okay. there should be an api call right for every time when i click on any link okay so okay. Uh, so yeah. it's like every time we have to go to database and fetch the data again yeah so how it is uh less consuming the data okay. is always there on the yeah. database okay now only now only focus on this menu part just imagine in this menu we have the primary menu inside the primary menu we have some menu is there just imagine i'm not talking about this filter i'm just talking about this menu part just imagine for each and every click if you're going to load the entire page in this case what happened we have a menu api and that menu api is going to call for each and every click 
in this case it's going to call the api and the api going to call database going to get the data but what happening in the single page application once you load the menus that time if you're going to click each and every link right we are not going to load the menu again if you are not going to load the menu again then what happening this is not going to cost you but in case of single page application what happened if you're going to click one of the link also this time my entire page is getting reload hmm. in this case unnecessary we are also going to load this menu but we don't have choice in the single, traditional application but so where do app- store this data from client end? Like we are fetching data from the database. Yeah, and it and, uh, yeah. We are UI. we are not going to store, How do we store on the UI. Uh, yeah, like in the so UI know. means we are going to store in the memory. That is the use of single page application. We have only one page. Once you load the data, you can store the data into your memory. And again, you can design your application in such a way that you want to call the data again and again, or you are not going to call data again and again. It's up to you. But here you can see that we have a menu is fixed. Once the menu loaded means it's loaded. We are not going to load this menu again and again in the click of any of these things. If we're going to click any of the menus, our this any of many of the any of the menu item. In this case, we are not loading this header and the menu again. We are only loading this part. This is called on-demand loading. For that reason, we are going obviously we are going to consume the API, but we are not going to consume the API of this menu again and again because this is already you get the data on the page load. After that, only we are changing this part. That's the reason I'm so saying up, that. Uh, up yeah. the page load, we are saving the data somewhere yeah. in the memory. memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the, that is the browser memory. Browser memory, okay. Yeah, we are going to load the, once load the data, that data is going to store in the browser memory. Only those content we're going to load, which content we require. In this case, you have to understand that this part is not going to call frequently from the database because already we have the data. Now, this calculation from the API, just imagine if you're going to click each and every link, we are going to load entire data, right? In that case, you're going to for the this process going to follow. For that reason, here going to use the less bandwidth, less server memory, less database memory. That's the reason I'm saying that here we are going to use a single page application once we load the data. We are not going to load the same data again and again. That is the use of a single page application. To de- got it? Yes. Now, to develop a single page application, we require certain programming language. We can able to using JavaScript, CSS, HTML, but the problem is using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, the problem is we have to write the code from the scratch. To overcome this issue, there is a predefined libraries and frameworks are available using that framework and library. We can able to develop the single page application. Now, the same to same developing the single single page application, we are going to use the React. Guys, if you're going to learn the React, first you have to learn the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We are not going to provide this HTML CSS because I, we are expecting if people at least know basic HTML CSS, but advanced HTML CSS, we can go to learn it. But basic HTML CSS, you must have to know. But we are going to start from the JavaScript only. As a developer, as in, in into our course, we are going to start from the JavaScript. To start with React, first we have to know the JavaScript. That is our part of our course. Okay. Apart from that, in React, these are the different different topic we are going to cover. One is, guys, project means don't think like we are only going to cover the topic. We are going, this is the only the topic one, like this is the how to install all these things, how to, what is the component, state, props, all these things will be there. Apart from this, we are going to cover convert the project into two parts. Okay, what is one is functional requirement another one is non functional requirement first understand these two things guys as a developer you have to always understand two part functional means suppose suppose uh, suppose uh, you are a developer your team is going to say that okay we are to develop the clone of flipkart then what is the clone of flipkart this is the link this is the menu on the click of this product we can able to search the product we can able to click the login we can able to do the do the login these are the functional requirement functional requirement means what like the client requirement client requirement 
whatever client is going to uh, tell you to develop that is called functional requirement this is okay but as a developer you have to first understand what is a non-functional requirement and this is the most important part we are going to focus into our course because in our react project class we are going to more focus on the non-functional requirement what is non-functional requirement just can you understand suppose you develop an application and one client is saying okay this is not working in my system and you know that this is the basic uh, like problem every day occur in the every application someone saying that okay this is not working now how we can go and track the application error this is the first one how you can go and track the application error how you can go and logging the application error if any user getting the any error or anything how you can as a developer go and track the error second thing application performance now you know that as a developer you can develop an application but how you will know that how my application is works now like how application is going to load first for that reason we are going to use different different tools just like google lighthouse as a tool using that we can able to track the application performance how the application is going to perform in different 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 environment just like desktop just like a mobile how the application is going to perform that is the one of the most important thing we have to learn using the application performance third thing security you know that without security there is no existence of any application we are going to learn how you can do the login logout multiple tab just like imagine suppose you have opened two tab one tab is going to log out how you can go and automatically log out from another tab that you have to learn if you the security and we have to learn about for the different different security principle we are going to apply using the react application guys always understand our mostly focus as a non-functional requirement functional you can because just imagine you can do suppose in your synotech you can do one project if you go to you another company you can do another project right project can be changed day by day that is the functional requirement but non-functional requirement is always be constant that's the reason we are most focusing on the non-functional requirement non-functional requirement second one is security security you have to learn fourth one is is fifth one unit testing you can imagine in a software development there is a 50 percent code 50 percent unit testing and no one we are going to focus on the unit testing but in as a non-functional requirement we are going to learn about how to do the unit test case into our application these are the we have so many different different tools for tracking the error we are going to use different tools for uh, like suppose you are going to track the application how many users are using what are the different different people are using which module all these things going to learn to integrate about the google analytics we are going to learn about data, data dog integration lot of things are there to track the application to check the application performance we are going to learn about google lighthouse we are going to uh, learn about google um, development tools lot of things will be there guys we have n number of functional non-functional requirement we are going to implement into our project okay these are the most important part apart from that we are going to learn about lot of things what are tools we are going to learn first we are going to learn about react 18 that is the last uh, react we are going to learn about react 18 second one we are going to learn about css css means we are going to learn about bootstrap Sorry. we are going to learn about javascript then TypeScript. These two things we are going to develop the application using JavaScript and TypeScript. These two things we are going to learn. Third thing, we are going to learn about different different tools that I already discussed here. Apart from that, we're going to learn about Bootstrap. Okay, Bootstrap is your basic things. Flex layout. These are the mostly used flex uh, into our application, Bootstrap and Flex layout. Third one, uh, fourth one, we are going to use MUI. That is called the material ui for our react application fifth we are going to learn about our git 
how to store how to go and store the data like our code into github git uh, git is going to learn about branch strategy how to create a branch how to create a multiple branch how to do the pr pull request because, because become a suppose you are a senior developer how go and do the pr request how to do all these things sixth we are going to learn about azure devops in going to learn about ci cd pipeline how can go and set up your own ci cd pipeline using the azure how can go and build and deployment seven we are going for the deployment structure we're going to learn about docker how you can go and dockerize your react application same to same we are going to learn about the social media login okay in eight we are going to learn about social media login what is social media login means using the social media means for google like facebook how you can go and log in the application using that and nine finally we're going to uh, deploy the application using the heroku okay and aws we're going to show that how we can go and deploy the application all these things guys right here we can able to cover everything we're going to learn the react and finally 10 we're going to do the project we're going to discuss about what project we're going to do in the class but in side by side project we're going to learn all these things okay you can see that first we have to learn the javascript then we have to learn about typescript first week we are going to start the javascript and typescript basic javascript and typescript because we are not going to do advanced and when go and implement the javascript typescript into a react application that time we're going to learn about the advanced basic going to start from javascript then typescript then react then go to implement all these things one by one by one. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.